This was, a, a, this was true in the 1960s and early 70s with the COINTEL program, a massive program to uh, target the anti-war movement, to uh, protest, uh, to target uh, the black, blacks like Martin Luther King, uh, targeting some white racists and other groups. But there was an FBI agent who said at that point that the goal was to make the anti-war people think that there was an FBI agent hidden behind every mailbox. And we haven't reached that point yet, but, but at this point it's easy to imagine there's a federal agent overseeing every internet service provider. And any sense of sanctity of private data, it's gone. Because there have been very few companies that had the gumption to tell the government no. And when, when companies do, the government brings its wrath down upon them. Another thing that's going on right now, uh, the FBI is building up a network of 15,000 covert informants uh, here in the U.S. to feed it reports about possible terrorists and foreign spies. Now, you know, it's kind of a problem when you get a network of 15,000 people to feed you information about terrorists when, you, when there are apparently not very many terrorists. I mean, it sort of turns into a uh, self-fulfilling kind of thing because if you, look at, uh, if you look at many of the most high-profile terrorism prosecutions since 9-11, they were basically government, uh, government manufactured. This case down in Miami of these um, boneheads who, who, uh, who, were, who were out there asking for terrorist uniforms and, and, and wanted to hold a terrorist parade, basically. And these, and these are the folks that the Justice Department is assuring us posed a grave threat to the Sears Tower. I mean, these are folks who probably couldn't have, could not have even made it to Chicago, even if you gave them a bus ticket. I mean, these, these are folks that would have got lost in Memphis where they're supposed to transfer. But, um, you know, it's, it's a standard of what this country's become the, uh, the Justice Department made this one of their most high-profile cases and took it to a jury in Florida, and the government lost. But the government wasn't satisfied. The, the government brought in a new jury, a new case. They lost again. And they, and they are bringing this case a third time. I mean, this, this is a, a legal atrocity. I mean, the uh, folks who've been prosecuted, I mean, they're sure as heck not model citizens. But they, they are typical of a lot of the arrests since 9-11. These are people who would, who would not oppose any real danger unless the government was feeding them and egging them on. And there's a pattern on this going back a long ways in American history. Uh, there was uh, a number of cases of violence in the 1960s that were done by government instigators. Government instigators would, would join groups and then urge them to uh, become violent. And these 15,000 covert informants the FBI is building up you know, what is their code of conduct? I mean, certainly the FBI has a, uh, has a very dubious record on that in the past. And what would those informers get bonuses for? That's the thing. I mean, what is their incentive, you know? I mean, justice is, you know, justice and fair play, you know, this is not how you move up the FBI, um, move up the FBI or up their network of informants. Another thing that's going on right now, the Bush administration is pushing to create a new program to allow Pentagon spy satellites to pass on information about Americans to, to state and local law enforcement agencies. Uh, needless to say, there, there would not be a lot of paperwork as far as warrants to be done with this, but this is the kind of surveillance that, is, that was long seen as completely illegal. But very few people are objecting to this in Washington right now. Uh, this, you know, the thought of using, uh, handing, uh, photos from Pentagon spy satellites and local law enforcement, you know, it might cut down on the number of underage sex romps in Montana haystacks, but as far as having any real effect on public safety, it doesn't. But it's just one more way the government can tighten the screws on the American people. Another example that's going on, it's going to be happening across airports around the country now, is the TSA has brought in a new type of screening machine uh, called the backscatter x-ray, which allows the government to see through people's clothes. And this is, I mean, this is also something which could go on your permanent record. <laughs> because, you know, if someone, you know, uh, if someone would trust, uh, trust the TSA not to keep dirty pictures, I mean, you know, that's a real triumph of faith. And, uh, and, and, uh, and if you think of some of the movie stars or famous females going through there, what would their photo be worth? 
that's the kind of thing. And, uh, you know, as, as far as... Um, but there's been so little controversy about this. This is something that editors don't want to hear about for the most case. This is something which uh, politicians are ignoring. It's one more example of how people are simply falling in line in this country. Now, it's, it's interesting to see some of the doctrines that the Bush administration is flourishing. Um, there's, there, there's, uh, in a speech to the Fairless Society last year, Bush said that when Americans go to court, they deserve swift and fair answers. Unless, of course, the administration decides to give them no answers. Nothing illustrates this better than the state secrets doctrine. This is something that originated in the 1950s after a, a, a bomber crash of a B-29. The uh, widows of the crash, crash victims sued, asserting that their husbands died because of government negligence. Uh, but, but, uh, but the Air Force said uh, that the official report in the crash revealed classified information that could not be disclosed without endangering national security. Well, 50 years later, the uh, actual report was disclosed. It had nothing to do with national security. It said that the government screwed up. But, uh, but the Air Force swayed the courts except this, and the Supreme Court rubber-stamped that doctrine. And ever since then, this has been used in this country, it's spreading like a mushroom cloud. Something the Bush administration does is use claims of state secrets to prohibit torture victims from disclosing to their defense attorneys the, the specific interrogation methods that they, were, that they suffered. A Justice Department spokeswoman said that letting a former Maryland resident tell his lawyer me the methods that were used on him would, uh, would risk disclosing potentially highly classified information that is vital to our country's ability to fight terrorism. I mean, it's been all over the papers, a lot of the methods that the government has used, but it's still a state secret because the government says so. Uh, state secrets were used to uh, cloak the case of Khaled El Masri, a German citizen of Lebanese descent who was vacationing in Macedonia in 2003. Uh, bad vacation choice on his part. Uh, he was kidnapped by the CIA there. Um, he was stripped, he was beaten, he was shackled, and he's flown to a secret interrogation center in Afghanistan where he was tortured for four months. The CIA, the CIA eventually realized they had the wrong guy. It, it turns out that Masri uh, that, that there was some, somebody in a, uh, in a terrorist cell in Hamburg named Masri, but, uh, but, uh, uh, but this guy, he's like a used car dealer in Frankfurt. And it was well known, it was very easy to prove, but they still spent four months torturing the guy. Uh, after four months, he was flown to Albania and he was dumped on the side of the road. The European Union investigated and confirmed uh, his allegations. The German government issued arrest warrants for 13 CIA agents in 2007 for their role in his kidnapped and torture. Masri's story, story was all over Europe and he was interviewed by 60 Minutes and other American media. Uh, Masri sued the CIA chief tenant, three private aviation companies, and 20 unnamed employees of the CIA and other, uh, uh, and other affiliates. The, the, the ACLU, which took this case, said the Supreme Court should not allow the U.S. government to engage in torture, declare it a, a, a state secret, and avoid any judicial accountability. Well, it went to a federal appeals court, and it said that uh, the appeals court said the government was, did the right thing to sacrifice Masri's, quote, personal interest for the, for the general, for the collective interest in national security. Now, these, these, these federal appeals judges did not explain how covering up this specific case made Americans safer. But it didn't matter. They were kowtowing to the government. Um, in October 2007, the Supreme Court announced that it would not hear this case. It, it, it effectively banned Masri from American courtrooms. Apparently, as long as the U.S. government has not confessed, it is a state secret. And this is a, a le legal absurdity, and yet this is what the government has gotten away with again and again and again. And this is a major reason why the uh, why, the, um, why the full details of the torture scandal have not come out yet. Because of the U.S. government using these arguments that don't pass a laugh test. Yet you've had uh, these, these judges who are so complicit in tyranny at this point. Uh, there's, you know, this state secrets doctrine uh, is also key to the wiretapping cases.